Welcome to video three for the Lake Personal Lab. Uh, let's play with the Lake Load Ride Library. It's kind of an interesting feature. First, we're going to need to import a uh, processor, a frame, if you will, into Lake. Going to Lake, um, so go to Modules Mode. You'll find yourself in Modules Mode much of this assignment. This is where you configure things. And uh, this is where you would, if you are on the smart, if you're on the uh, smart rack, rack network right now and you have the LM44 uh, showing up, it would show up here as four dots. You're not going to use those. We're going to do all virtual here. So if we go into this virtual frames folder, um, you can see all of the different processors that Lake works and you can drag them around, which is really awkward because those dots appear. Or you can use the arrow keys. See how the dots appear? And I'm having a hard time. Escape key will get me out of the dots, but escape key me brought me back to home as well. So back to modules, back to virtual frames. I'm going to use these little arrow keys to steer through all the available lake frames. Uh, we're going to be using this just first one. It makes it simpler for you. For contour mode, uh, a PLM, uh, it's, it's a PLM 5, 5K44. It's a lab group and amplifier. We're going to grab it, drag it into here and red dots indicate they're muted. Of course, this is virtual. And this is a, a frame is all four. It's an overall, it's an overall processor. It's an amplifier, but each one of these is a module. These are the different processing, um, I don't know, channels, if you will, even channels is a bad term, but within that amplifier, it's a four channel amplifier. So you can kind of think of it in your head being a four module amplifier. Um, so I'm going to select this first module and I'm going to import something from the lake library into it. And what is the lake library? Well, a bunch of different manufacturers make files for lake and you can import them for specific loudspeakers. So you go over here to go to module store recall. This is different from the system store recall. We were working in earlier when we saved our file and module store recall will let us go load some default stuff or the lake load library. So let's load up one particular lake load library file. I'm going to go into it. I'm going to see a whole bunch of manufacturers. And I believe I went with EAW for um, this assignment. So we're going to look for EAW. It looks like I missed it by one. It's somewhere there it is, EAW. And we're going to open up, I believe, all the way down at the end, the KF. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see how it, for KF, for KF. And I think this is a time where the dragging does work better. KF 8, 850Z, big boy. And let's just, uh, I think it's this one that we're going to use. And so we're going to drag it and I'm going to double click it. Before I double click it, it does tell me a bunch of different stuff that, that's in this preset. It's a triamp. It's got a high pass filter. It's at 80 hertz. It's the crossover with a 24 dB LR filter, blah, blah, blah. There's more. So anyway, if I double click this, it's going to ask me, do you sure you want to load this to the destination module? Now, the destination module is the one I've selected, the one that's in yellow. And I say yes. And now it's got the first thing it does is it jumps to output configuration and how the outputs are mapped. And you would need to remap this later on. We're not going to deal with it right now, but we will come back to this screen. Trust me. And we have now have a preset, if you will, an EAW preset loaded on this first module. And you can see it's there. Now there's not much to see here because the manufacturers lock out the data. So you can't see it. But if I go back to home screen, once you go to home screen, now we're no longer in modules. Once you're in a home screen, you can uh, click on one of these modules and see what's inside of it. And boom, there's some filters that you can, and this is all stuff you can, the user could do, right? I could grab an EQ, put it here and start tweaking it. But the actual data of the manufacturer is hidden in the background. The limiters, the crossovers and all that is hidden because it's a preset and they don't want you to mess with it. So that's all there is to this. It was really a, tutor a tutor tutorial to let you know that, hey, there's manufactured data out there. We're not going to do that. We're going to do this slightly differently. We're going to go back to modules. We're going to use the same thing. This is where what you actually need to do, which is a uh, module store recall. Of course, I've still selected that one. And we're going to go up and up and up a couple times until we get to the back to the default level here. And we're going to open up the default modules. And there's some choices here. We're going to be working with classic crossovers. So contour classic crossovers, because we're in contour mode. And we're going to open up a CL2A. This is a classic 
two way. It's just a simple because the speaker you're going to use is a two way by amp uh, unit. So that's the one we're going to want to open. I double click. It's going to ask me again, you sure you want to overwrite all that EAW stuff? And I go, yep. And now we have, and it comes to the output configuration. We will mess with this later. So I'm going to close it. But you can now see that this is a CL two way. This particular module is a two way where the other ones are still stuck in one way. Um, I'm going to go back to the instructions, make sure I, I haven't forgotten everything and that I make sure I'm on track here. I'm pretty sure that's what you need to do. Uh, there's all the KF850 stuff. So we're going to configuring the main. We're right here, classic two way. So let's, let's continue on with this classic two way and configure it. We're going to put a crossover in and we're going to put the crossover at 2.5K and it's going to be a 12 dB Butterworth and we're going to have to reverse the polarity on the top um, and uh, turn the levels uh, down by 3 dB. Okay, I've just remembered everything I got to do. So let's go into that module and to, in order to go in and process it, I got to go back to the home screen. I'm out of the module page now. When I click on it, boom, there we are. Uh, the crossover, right? So it's gonna it's gonna send the lows to the lows and the highs to the highs. The crossover is defaulting to one kilohertz. You can drag that around with this guy, or uh, hit the filter edit button and just type in the number you want. It's 2,500 for this assignment, and boom, that moves the crossover to that place. And we want to change the crossover to something different. So let's hit crossover select. And this is where you do it. And I believe I did a, 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 did I say 12 dB Butterworth? Okay, cool. 12 dB Butterworth. Then you hit crossover set. That actually makes it. Are you sure you want to make it? Yes, I do. That actually got broader there because it was a 24 dB Linquist Riley. Now it's a 12 dB. So it's half as narrow. Um, and uh, if you, what's weird about 12 dB Butterworths? Well, I don't know if you remember this from speaker systems, but each, uh, each filter is going to do 90 degrees of phase shift because you get 45 degrees of phase shift for every um, order of filter. And this is a second order filter. So you get 90 degrees of phase shift, which means the two channels are out of polarity to each other, right? They're out of phase. Um, so we need to invert polarity on the top side. To, comp to overdo, to, to compensate for the fact that this filter is doing that. So that's when we're on the crossover tab here. Let's go to the levels tab. And the, 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 the polarity button is right there. And you can, tr and you can see this is the low output and it's the high output. And if I try to flip polarity, it won't let me because you need to enable polarity. So we'll enable polarity, invert it. And I believe the instructions also told me to turn the high output down by minus three. You could do it again with the fader, or you could type in minus three. So here we go. Boom. And now we go back and we look at our EQ page and we look at our crossover. You can see that we have attenuated the top band by minus three. So I think that's it for the moment. Let me double check on the assignment. And we have... Yep, second dB. We've done the polarity reverse. We've done the level tabs. And I uh, believe we're all good. And there's a little picture of what we just did. So um, I'm going to stop right there because it feels like the video is getting long. Okay.